We've ridden a lot of bikes over the years, some good, some not so good. In today's episode, we're going to roast our old bike selves. <laughs> Are we good enough to put flames over the, we're not we we're not good enough to do this are we and make it do it flames here please <laughs> first bike is one of francis cades i don't even know what to call it what what is it's a uh, franken bike s works specialized alley pretty certain that never existed as a bike no what what are you looking at right there an s works specialized alley exactly i raced for a couple of elite bike teams well i raced for one elite bike team <laughs> And for two years, I was given a team bike and got to ride a really nice team bike, which you'll see later in the video. Then I left the team and then obviously you don't get given a free bike anymore and you have no money. So this is what I ended up with. I went on eBay and found it. I don't know how I found it. It's a repainted specialized alley to look like an S-Works bike. So you bought it with S-Works on? Yeah. Advertised as Specialized LA repainted with S-Works on the side. Right, okay. So I went, oh, yes, please. It was obviously secondhand. I have no idea what the condition of the bike was before, but I actually had m many miles of fun on it. It looks quite good. It does look good, doesn't it? I'm sure it doesn't perform as well as it looks though, because it's not an S-Works. No, it performs almost exactly the same as a Specialized LA, mm. with some parts that I had lying around, which having raced for a couple of years at this point, I had some decent parts lying around. So it was a specialized seat post in there, which is filthy and marked and scratched, but it has one of those little rubbery inserts in. I think it's from the Roubaix. So it's a straight through seat pin, but with some relief built in. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the position on it was great and the geometry and everything, it just, it worked. It was actually it was very good. What about the wheels that don't match? Well, what about them? They just don't match, it's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Yeah, sweet. What do you reckon to these cranks? It looks like a monstrosity. It was. <laughs> it was a monstrosity. <laughs> these, these are osymmetric chain rings. And I guess I must have like seen Chris Froome and Bradley Wiggins winning Grand Tours on them. So I was like, oh yeah, I'll have some of that. The shifting was awful, but... But you look like Chris Froome and Brad Bradley Wiggins. Uh, same race results, basically. So this is my specialised LA Sprint. Your saddle is so far for... Like, that is... I mean, obviously we all do it when we're racing, but that is way beyond the limits of what it should be on the rails. So part of the reason for that is that has the, do you know those 3T aero bars? So they've got like a flat top and an unbelievably long reach to the Super shifter. long reach, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And 130 mil step. <laughs> that bike was so long. This is on a little, this is on a small frame as well. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> You can only ride fast on it. Yeah. Cool. It also has uh, the worst paint scheme of all time. What are you um, talking about? I know this is supposed to be roasting, but that, that's a great color. Yeah, from that angle, but it was a flip paint. So you look at it in different places and it just kind of looks like a mess of, of different different colors of orange and red. Do you have a it's matching terrible. golden jockey wheel? I did have golden jockey wheel, yeah. Do you have a Shimano crank from the era where they're almost definitely going to snap if you ride them in cold weather. I still own that crank and it is due to be checked uh, soon. <laughs> okay. Other issues with this bike are if you've ever seen a specialized LA Sprint up close, the welds on them are absolutely grotesque. Mm -hmm. They're just like these big lumpy things in really weird places. Well, what you should have got is a S Works LA. The welding was. Yeah, that's what I should have done. Crisp. Back onto one of yours. This is the year. I gained my elite license. I rode for a team called the VO2 Development Squad. And it was a fantastic team, actually. We got given these bikes by a sponsor. I say that, we, we had to buy them. <laughs> we had to buy the bikes at very low price for the year. And they are either open mold frames from Hongfu or Dengfu, who were the big Chinese manufacturers at the time, painted with VO2 on the side, not painted very well. Everybody's filled with water. And that's a problem when you race in the UK because at least 80% of the races you do are wet. So we'd literally finish at the end of a bike race and the bikes would be so heavy. <laughs> it should be full of water, there's no drainage hole at all. Some people would drill a little, oh, I wasn't gonna do that, didn't trust it. Osymmetric chain rings make a, make a comeback. I feel like the theme of your bikes is gonna be osymmetric. Right, chain rings. wicked, they're wicked. <laughs> Got a nice set of zips on there. Uh, Mark Cavendish stem, the pro, I think it's pro vibe, something something, bar and stem. It's a matching set. That stem I bought from one of my mates and immediately over-tightened and snapped one of the bolts in it. 
So I raced it for a whole year with one bolt. <laughs> I'm in danger. One bottle cage? I don't know what's going on there. I probably added another one before I got, got racing. This is when I built it. I think I just built it literally there in front of that curtain. Last point about this bike. Despite it being a mishmash of parts and on paper, not a very good frame, especially all those years ago, I won loads of races on it. So I actually fond memories. Next up, we have my Cannondale CAD X, which is Cannondale's alloy cyclocross bike. Is that completely stock? That is completely stock. Yeah, yeah. it looks it. The color scheme I like. The, but, but there is no color. Well, black and white, I like that. <laughs> the graphics I hate, especially on the wheels. Too much. Very safe reflectors for in the cyclocross race when cars might come onto the track. Yeah, that's before I started removing reflectors. Yeah. Things that made this bike bad are, it was the first disc bike I brought and it was mechanical. mechanical disc brakes. So it was never any better than rim brakes. Mm. At the time, two by was normal to me, but in hindsight, one by is a much better option. For cross, definitely. Yeah. So I hated the color scheme so much that I wrapped it. I bought an Arctic camo wrap off of You eBay, did that. And I wrapped it myself. That looks really good from a very grainy, tiny picture far away. That's the significance of it. <laughs> so up close, all of, all of the edges are like terribly cut. And anywhere yeah. where I cut it wrong, I just colored it in with a black marker pen. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So like up close, it was absolutely atrocious. How good does the Cannondale logo look before they changed it to Helvetica? It and I'm awesome. Helvetica fanboy through and through, but on a bike frame, <laughs> it looks shit. <laughs> Please, it's like lowercase helmet, like ooh, rebranding. I could have done that. My wrapping skills with a W were really bad and therefore I decided that it had to go. So I got it professionally resprayed. Brown. By <laughs> Tom at Custom Flow. Or maybe I shouldn't name drop him. And I said well, to no, him- it's a lovely job. It's just a shame of the, the choice of color. I said to him, do whatever you want with it. Oh, first mistake um, there. It was a red fade. Was he just hoping you'd then pay him to get another paint job? <laughs> the one half of it wasn't brown, it was red. But that faded into black. And if you fade red into black, it actually just becomes Goes brown. brown. And then a super over the top gold fork. The problem with this then amazing colour scheme was then Cannondale did a factory recall on all of those forks. So I had this really fancy gold custom painted fork that then got replaced with a just plain black one with a, a little C on it. So did they recall it and take it back? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So they probably had it like, why is one gold? Well, no, there, there was... We found the golden fork. Basically, the bike shops had to destroy them and then send them a photo of the destroyed, oh. destroyed bike. So yeah, ultimately it ended up looking like this, which is slightly less impressive. One bike though, good upgrade. My first ever road bike, Trek 1.2, with me in it as well, kind of. The bar tape and saddle, that was the whitest they ever were. Yeah. And after that, gray for the rest of its life. Little bag to carry food. At one point in my life, I probably would have scoffed at that. Now, I think, logical, excellent training, little food in the front, mm -hmm. eat your stuff. It's ahead of its time, really. Ahead of its time, yeah. That bait, Tailfin have just released that bag. Mm. That was when Sora had little thumb presses like Tony does now. So and all awful the cables group set. sticking out. Ever one million cables at the front mm -hmm. of the bike. Yeah, not a great group set. That bike was 600 pounds. I think this proves that nowadays you can spend almost half that budget. I know inflation and stuff, but 350 quid is gonna get you a bike that's better than that. Yeah. The group set, the components, definitely. However, the Trek equivalent now, that's 600 pounds, if they do that. If they won't do one, Will sure. be a third of how good that is. Yeah. Next, this is when I met you, that's what you look like. What, lean? <laughs> <laughs> you look like an action man. If I bought an action figure, London cyclist, that's, a, that's what you'd look like. And you'd have a little in the box, there'd be a helmet you can put on and off. <laughs> so this is my very white Planet X time trial bike. I thought that was a track bike. Is that a photo blurred or am I just... Um, Your eyesight's going. My blurred. eyesight's going, yeah. I really loved this bike. I loved time trialing and I loved exploring how to get into better positions, even though it was terrifying. The problem with this bike is it just wasn't very aero, or maybe I wasn't, but I was as fast on a road bike as I was on my time trial bike. <laughs> 
The other problem with those handlebars is that they had so few options for like changing the position. Mm. You couldn't actually get them that close together. I'm going to show you the bike that I was as quick as this TT bike was. For some reason, I decided that fluoro yellow was the new the new thing. So I put fluoro yellow bar tape and bottle cage it was. on it. There was a there was good two years where fluoro yellow was the thing. Well, and the, now this must have been it's coming it. back around. I can see that Argos bike in the corner of my eye there. These are Planet X wheels and with no branding on them. Mm -hmm. Tubs. Yep. I rode this bike everywhere for 12 months with tubs on it. And if you look at my seat post, you'll see that there is a pre-taped tub. Just in case. Taped to my seat post as my spare. Get, smart move. The only thing that's missing from there is a Silka frame pump and you've got like peak classic wannabe Italian bike racer. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course, the matching kit. Interesting jersey and short choice. It looks like the glasses are fluoro yellow as well. Hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's good. It was at the time, fluoro yellow. That was that. The felt team. Yeah, all just fluoro yellow. It's good. Similarly to your cheap carbon weird VO2 bike, it used to fill up with water. I did drill holes in the bottom bracket so it could vent out because I used to commute on this bike as well. So it used to just fill up with commuter water. Next up is my specialized Venge. First year riding for Pedal Heaven, which is the team that became Canyon Iceberg. Iceberg. This is me taking it home on the train. Definitely before you became a competent photographer. Before I got an iPhone. I almost can't make the bike out, it's so blurry. Hmm. What about the pedals? I don't think you'd have been racing on those. What, those plastic toe clips? Yeah. No, probably not. Have you ever ridden with toe clips? Yes. Did you fall off? No. I'm surprised. Because <laughs> once you put in, what It's in forever. It's, it doesn't come out. If you get good ones and you just... The train picture had a different crank set on. I then installed a rotor power crank set, power meter. It didn't work at all. The power numbers were like either ridiculously high or zero. It's like <laughs> a thousand watts or zero. I, it was a first iteration power meter, like the first one they made. I'm sure they're better now, but that was terrible. I'm not a huge fan of the color scheme, which presumably was the team colors. Team colors done with decals. But that's a six bike. Yeah, it's not bad. I was once at breakfast with Nicky Terpstra, Paris-Roubaix and Flanders winner. And he told me his favorite and fastest bike that he'd ever ridden in the world tour was the first edition Specialized Venge. S-Works, that one. Did you win much on it? Nope. <laughs> <sighs> My. I hate this bike. Cannondale Super X gravel bike, which was actually bike. a cross bike. So they, I think they started marketing these as gravel bikes, but they're not, they're cross geometry. A new entry for the worst paint job of all time. If it didn't have the black stripes on it. They're blue. <laughs> They were navy. Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so bad. Do, do you remember it's got like fake dirt dirt on it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But that, that really is the worst paint job of all time. Yeah. But I guess the idea is like, oh, it doesn't matter if it, I can just leave it with a few specs on because mm. it looks like exactly the same. So the main issues with this, apart from it being the actual worst paint job of all time, are that, that dog. Oh, it's just a bottle in the bottle <laughs> cage. <laughs> yeah, <it's> just... <laughs> <coughs> So the actual worst thing about this bike, well, two things. One, we decided for a video to hand sand this bike so I could get it resprayed. <laughs> and it ended up That's taking us. That's why I know it. <laughs> yes. I forgot, Wait, that was it. I feel like this is a stupid idea, Jimmy. It's not gonna look very good. This was the bike that we sanded down for literally, it must have been 50 hours. <laughs> it was like the most, unpleasant, uncomfortable, worst experience in my life. I joined you for the first 10 hours of that. Yeah. Then it got resprayed to a uh, frame pump. Cool. Fantastic green. So then it looked really good. But the ma mistake I made at that point was then selling some of the very good components on it and rebuilding it with crapper components and a flat bar. You built this as like a commuter bike to use around the northeast on yeah. the gravel. And you put the widest handlebars in the world on it. Yeah and then realize that they for the Northeast, they don't fit in anything. Like all of the gates, yeah. which are probably illegal. They're probably not allowed because you won't be able to get like a hand bike or any other type of bike through them. Dumb idea. It's just a fun bike, but yeah. it was a really bad idea. Yeah. That marks the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed that little walk down memory lane. Let us know what the worst bikes that you've ever had are in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more.